Okay, now that we've turned the unit back on to the normal operating mode, we need to go in and do our calibrations. I'm gonna start with the flow sensor calibration first. To do that, I need to access the menu, which is right over here. And I'm gonna push that menu until I get to basically the alarm screen. So this is the alarm screen. Within the alarm screen, I'm gonna use the up and down arrows to navigate down to the exhale toggle volume display. So you can see right now, the toggle volume is right there. And I'm gonna navigate over into the middle position. So by hitting the enter key, it highlights the first parameter if I wanted to adjust it. By pushing it again, it goes to the middle. And then to do the calibration, I use the arrow up and it says, do you really wanna do the flow sensor calibration? And I'm gonna confirm I wanna do the calibration. And I wanna make sure that the end of the circuit is occluded, either with your hand or a gloved hand or the cap here. So right now it's in the process of doing the exhalation calibration. This takes probably about a minute. Initially, you don't hear much flow, but eventually you'll hear the flow ramp up. Okay, so it has just passed the flow sensor calibration. Uh, down below, if you did not pass, you would have an alarm here saying you failed the calibration. Please refer to the manual for things that you might want to check if you fail your calibration. So now that we've completed the exhalation flow calibration, we're gonna move now down to doing the O2 sensor calibration, which is found under the FiO2 display here. So I'm gonna go ahead and navigate down from the toggle volume with the arrow keys, down to the FiO2, press the enter key twice. It's in the off position, I'll use the arrow up. And I do want to do a calibration, yes. I will press the check mark to confirm I wanna do the calibration. This is a very quick test. Okay, so it's already completed the, the test. Okay, so let's now talk about navigating the screens on the Puritan Bennett 560 ventilator. I've turned the unit on and let's begin to look at how we navigate through things. So right now on the screen, we can see the current settings that are uh, left on the ventilator. So right now we're in volume based ventilation and it's in assist control. And we can see toggle volumes and peeps below it. How do we navigate around these? There are some buttons at the bottom and so if I want to move around, then I'll just use the arrow keys down, and then I'll determine what parameter I actually want to enter into. So for example, if I want to go into the peep, I'll press the check mark button here, the enter key. It will flash here, and it will flash here, and then you can decide to adjust that parameter up and down. Once you're done, you'll always need to press this little check mark button, which basically lets you know that you want to confirm that setting. Now, as I work my way down, uh, there's respiratory rate, so I can determine, you know, what kind of rate that I want to put on there, okay? There's the kind of flow patterns. So if I press the enter key, then I can change the flow pattern. So decelerating flow pattern, square wave, sign. Okay, so that's the way I'm going to work my way around these screens. And so I'm going to continue to work my way down. And as I work through these screens, if I ever want to turn something on, I'm always going to just go ahead, press the check mark button, and then the arrow up or down to determine whether or not I want to have a particular uh, feature set turned on. Okay. And I'm going to leave that one off. Once I'm done with the primary screen for the mode that I'm in, at the very bottom, there's a preferences button. So I'm going to move down to the preferences button and I'm going to press accept. And then here's all of the preferences that you can do for a particular mode of ventilation. So I'm going to go up to the top here, the backlit button. So uh, I do want it backlit. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. The contrast. I can change how bright the screen actually is. I'm going to leave that there. Alarm volume. You can determine how loud you want the volume. So once again, I press the check mark button to get in there. And I can adjust how loud that volume is. You can determine the, the key sounds as well, okay? You can go to apnea alarm and make sure if you want apnea alarm on or off, and of course I'll leave it as yes. Disconnect time, so how long do you want it to last for a disconnect? So I'll press the check mark button and then I may want to adjust that, okay? Then I'll press accept. 
Do you want to show waveform displays? Yes, I want to show the waveform displays. Do I have a pediatric circus? So if you were using this on a pediatric patient, you'd want to go ahead and check mark this, and then it kind of looks at how much volume is lost in the circuit. And then there are some other options for ventilator reports. You can actually send out some ventilator reports out the back. We've kind of talked about that earlier in terms of being able to get uh, reports about patients in the back. Once I'm done with this secondary preference screen, I can go down to back to ventilation and then press accept. So I've kind of set up the primary things associated with this initial uh, screen in terms of the display screen. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, change the mode of ventilation just to get an example there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. I'm going to change to, let's say, uh, pressure control. Okay. I'm going to press the check mark button to accept it. Okay. Okay, so now I've changed the mode over to pressure control ventilation, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, the strategy and uh, convention of the pressures between the PEEP and the instrument pressure. So the instrument pressure is set at 10, and the PEEP is set at 5. And when we were in the user setup, we determined that we want to set it as a relative relationship. So on the top, it says REL. And what that means is that if you have a pressure of 10 set, and if you have a PEEP of 5, that means it'll go up to 15. So then as we look at the rest of these, you have some other parameters in pressure control. You have rise time. So if I work my way down to rise time, you can set rise time. You can set the rate. You can set the instrument time. And once again, like all of the modes, you want to make sure that you verify all the settings on this screen. And then you go down to the preference screen to make sure that you have all that uh, set the way you want. Now on the screen as well, there's also a pressure bar. So you can see the pressure rise up. It starts from the peep, and it comes up to the peak pressure, and there's a little line there. It may be hard to see that. You also have on this screen a number of patient parameters, so you can tell what is the uh, volumes both inspired and expired. You can see the minute volume, see the total respiratory rate, the IA ratio, and then the FiO2. There's also a little indicator up on top here. It means that you're using an exhalation valve, an active exhalation valve with a dual limb circuit. So all these parameters help you navigate uh, the screen and give you additional information about what you want to uh, set and show for your patient. Okay, now I want to talk a little bit more about the alarms. As mentioned before, there is the ability to adjust the alarms, both low and high, depending upon the mode of ventilation that you're in. So on this screen, we can see if I want to go and change uh, one of the alarms, I can simply go to that particular alarm, and then I'll press the Enter key over here it highlights the minimum parameter, and then I can adjust it with the arrows up and down. And then finally, I want to press the check mark or enter key to accept that setting. It goes to the high one, and then I'll press accept there as well. Now you can see the actual patient value in the middle, and so that'll help guide uh, where to set, obviously, your low and your high alarm settings on there. You also have some additional information on the right-hand side and you also have a display of the last alarm that occurred, so that will always stay there. Okay? If I want to adjust any of the alarms down below, then I can go down below. Once again, I just hit the Enter key, go in, and make those manual adjustments. Okay, and then there's a respiratory rate one, and as well as an FiO2 one. So at this point, I want to spend a little bit more time on this area up in here. So this is the alarm control button. And when an alarm goes off, you'll see a visual indication here. Um, and you can also silence the alarm. But I want to point out a couple of things about this and this particular alarm. First off, I can't pre-silence the alarm. Okay. Um, I also cannot clear the screen of this last alarm here. So even though you push this button, it will not clear that screen. A, a medium tone alarm is a three-tone sound. And a high priority uh, alarm is a five-tone sound. Um, I'm going to uh, kind of simulate a couple of those as we kind of work our way through some of these alarms. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and unplug it. Okay. So we can see that there is an alarm that's flashing down below. And it's the AC power alarm. And there's a light up here that's lit. Now, this ventilator is intended to uh, be used as a transport as well. So I can actually push this and I get this alarm silence. And once again, alarm silence will last 60 seconds. But in the particular case of the uh, going on battery power, if I want to push it twice, it moves it from that position over to here, where now it's basically 
uh, silence long term and it won't come back on. So I've lost my visual indicators as well as my audio, uh, audio indicators. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this back in in the back. We're back on power and when it went back on power, it reset everything up, up, up there. So um, that's one uh, example of an alarm that can go off. I'm gonna give you another example if I were to disconnect the circuit. And once again, you determine how long it is before an alarm goes off for the disconnect. But it says patient disconnect right there. You notice that there is an audible alarm as well as a visual alarm. If I press it once, you see the alarm, uh, alarm indicator comes up that it has been silenced. Okay. Now, even though you silence an alarm, if a secondary alarm comes in, it may reactivate the alarms. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back up here. And you can see that those alarms uh, go away. Okay, so that's the basic function functionality of the alarm control button, as well as setting alarms. Uh, the last thing I want to kind of talk about is just uh, going to the, uh, pressing the menu key. And once again, part of moving on past the alarms is the waveform screen. And so on the waveform screen, you do get the display of the current mode that you're in. You do get a pressure waveform, and then you get a flow waveform. And these waveforms will basically uh, auto scale in about three breaths. In addition to that, you do see all of the patient data information that's being displayed here as well. So there are basically three uh, uh, screens and when you work your way through the normal menu, that is the primary setting screen, the alarm screen, and finally, the waveform screen. One more thing I wanted to mention about the displays here on this uh, initial screen is you can tell when the patient is actually triggering or not. If I look at the IE ratio area, just to the right of it, if I see a dot there, that means the patient is actually triggering. So we're gonna kind of show what that looks like if a patient began to trigger so you can see that little dot. And there it is right there. So that's what it looks like when a patient is actually triggering a breath. I want to talk to you now about turning the machine off. Now that we have the machine on, there are certain ways that you put it in standby versus turning the machine off. To put the machine in standby, what I'm going to do is push this button right here, and it says right on the screen, hold for three seconds, and then push it again to confirm. And now it's on standby. That's how you put it on standby. Now if I want to take it out of standby, I just push the button again, and then it will start ventilating. Now what I can't do is I can't just switch it off on the back. Watch what happens when I try to switch it off on the back. So if it's actually ventilating and I haven't put it in a standby function, if I try to turn it off, you get that sound and you get that screen. So I'm going to turn it back on. And instead of it going to a standby function because we were ventilating, it will go right into ventilation. So the normal process to stop the unit would be to put it in standby by holding the button in for three seconds. One, two, three, and then pushing it again. And then you go into standby. So now you can turn the unit off.